welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM has outlined a new coal procurement strategy as it moves to plug some short-term coal gaps. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss this new strategy. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Why does ESCOM currently have a coal shortage? The immediate cause is really the optimum mine and the sort of supply inadequacies from that mine. Everyone in South Africa I think would be aware of the recent history around optimum was owned by Glencore. There was a big dispute between Eskom and Glencore around the 150 rand a tonne supply agreement that was going to endure till 2018. The mine was put into business rescue. It was bought out of business rescue by a Gupta-linked company, Togeta, and uh, that company agreed to that 150 rand a tonne, but I think also found it extremely onerous uh, that Togeta um, has now subsequently put Optimum back into business rescue and supply from that mine to the Hendrina power station in particular has, uh, has dwindled and therefore uh, Eskom has a fleet of 15 power stations and seven of those uh, including Hendrina have been affected by these shortages and uh, the others being honoured to Tuka, Majuba, Camden, Creel and Kumati and they say that Kumati has now recovered back to the 20 day target level and that over the next few months there will be a program of uh, replenishing stocks at those mines, uh, at those power stations to, to that 20 day level but they definitely have fallen below and there wo was concern uh, that this could lead to load shedding as we remember back in 2008 when there was that wet coal crisis and the, the, stock, the stocks of, of dry coal or adequate quality coal wasn't there we descended into a um, load shedding crisis even though it was during summer and the demand uh, wasn't really at its peak and there was uh, and we had been told for many many years that we had adequate capacity now we're in a similar sort of back to the future scenario here we we definitely have had our demand fall and consumption fall in South Africa and suddenly now we're talking about load shedding again and it came as something of a surprise given the excess capacity, give, uh, not only because of the coal uh, stocks were supposed to be back at that level, uh, coal stations were supposed to be recovering their uh, energy availability factors to m more around the 80% level from falling to the low 70s at one stage. And, uh, and, and also we've had the introduction of new build in the form of Madupi units and Kusia, so it did come as a surprise. But it seems that there's been a number of issues around coal supply, the most immediate cause being uh, the, the lack of supply to Andrina at Optimum and the spillover effects into other Mpumalanga mines, but also just uh, um, an underinvestment, especially in the cost plus tide mines, which has been sort of the immediate, immediate cause of this shortfall at the moment. What is ESCOM doing to deal with the situation? So there's a coal replenishment program, a short-term replenishment program that's been initiated and uh, they've obviously had to find a way, they have to find a way of fun funding that. They want to get back to the 20-day level across all stations at the moment. Six are still below that level and uh, they think it's going to take until October, November really to get all the stations back to the, the, that stock level. Across the, the whole fleet of 15 power stations, there is 35 days worth of stock, which is good, but they are having to check that and verify that because they found when they did that uh, uh, at Hendrina, uh, the stocks that were said to be there were not actually there. And there was, it seems that fraud may have been committed and some people have s been suspended. So they've been doing some aerial surveys of their stockpiles at the various stations and I imagine that's an ongoing exercise to make to verify that what they say in, in their books in terms of coal is actually there. So they've also had to go to the National Treasury for an, um, an exemption from the normal PFMA procurement uh, processes around coal to get this emergency coal a short-term supply and allow them to contract without going through the normal tender procedures, the normal long-winded bidding processes. So they, they, they are now in the process of trying to replenish, but there is still something of a fear that there could be, uh, there could be a, a shortage of, that could lead to, um, to supply interruptions, although they are fairly confident as we come out now of the high maintenance summer season and into the peak winter period, 
a fairly confident that there's not only sufficient nameplate capacity, but there's sufficient coal to get us through. But during this uh, short-term period, they have had to utilise the open ga cycle gas turbines down in the Western Cape more than they probably would have uh, liked to. Still below the, the levels that we saw t a year, two years ago and a year ago, but uh, in March, uh, they used uh, nearly 70 million rands worth of diesel to run those uh, plants to deal with those shortages uh, at, at the coal-fired power stations. What is the utility's longer-term plan for securing sufficient coal for its power stations? I think that's uh, going to be a key focus, uh, other than this immediate uh, um, replenishment, and needs to be done without going to having to seek exemptions, I think, from the National Treasury in the way they procure. So we want good governance and we want things procured properly. Um, we know what bad governance at Eskimo has led to. And uh, there's going to be also a cost, a serious cost, uh, to the primary energy budget and going out on these sort of short-term replenishment programs where they have to be almost price takers. They're not going to be the price makers. So they need to get back into a phase of being a little bit more in control of their coal costs. And one thing I think they're saying, they reversed the policy now clearly that was introduced uh, during Brian Malef, his tenure as CEO, uh, of not investing in the cost plus mine or under investing in the cost plus mine or questioning whether Eskom should have cost plus mine. The philosophy then was that we are, you know, we need the bread, we don't need to own the bakery. Uh, the new the acting CEO, um, uh, Pakamani Khadebe uh, said that it's not like buying bread to have coal and therefore we do want to reinvest in our tired mine. These are still uh, make sense for us. They still are uh, they ultimately will be uh, our lowest cost of supply. So there will be an effort now to start recapitalizing the tired mines uh, to the power stations. But beyond that, there is a, there's an ongoing shortfall every year. Eskom seems to be contracting about 15% less than what it needs to keep itself not only operating at, at, at a certain level, but also to keep its stocks at that 20-day level. So there's a 100 million ton uh, tender that has been released, and uh, the bids have already come in, and we now th that's an evaluation phase, and contracts will probably arise as a result of that. And obviously there's this perennial issue of Kosile supply. You know, Madupi uh, up in the Limpopo was built with a supply agreement uh, uh, with Exara, and uh, it's a take or pay agreement. And uh, because it's so delayed, they've actually got massive amounts of stock uh, at that Madupi power station. So if you were to look at adding Madupi's stock levels into that 35-day average that uh, Eskim spoke about, it takes it well beyond the 50-day of stocks that Eskim has because they're just sitting on masses of uh, stock. But at Kusili, it's the opposite, where they actually haven't got a long-term supply. We had the Anglo and Yossi mine that just never materialized. We've seen transactions around Anglo and the sale of certain Anglo mines to the Sariti-led cons consortium. And uh, they said that they are looking now to finally bed down a 60-year type supply agreement for the Kusile power station. So for the two new uh, power stations that will be in the system going on till 2050, uh, there's going to be uh, sufficient coal, but they're going to need to replenish for the other fif uh, 15 power stations in the fleet. And that's an ongoing thing. But, and they're at about 85% of what they need to 2025. And they've also indicated, uh, Eskim, that they don't plan to go to 100% because there is some uncertainty about the future uh, use of some of these older power stations. Um, and given the low, low demand, whether uh, it's more efficient and more effective to start phasing those out, we're really going to be going through a decommissioning phase massively during the mid-2020s, whether some of those units might not be brought, brought forward in terms of decommissioning. But that's uh, something that we'll have to see over the next few months as Eskom works on its strategy and defines its role uh, uh, for the future, makes itself fit for the future, because we can see that there's a lot of stress on Eskom and, and its role, and there's a lot of debate as to where that should go in the future. They don't want to be at 100% uh, contracted capacity and then be in a situation as they are uh, at Madupi where they've got a take, and take or pay agreement and they're basically just having to stockpile. So I think a bit of prudency and leaving a little bit of 
a gap, uh, I think, is, is part of it. But on the whole, uh, coal is part of the mix for some time to come. And uh, to run our power stations uh, going forward, we're going to need sufficient coal um, at the right price. Otherwise, we can see what happens on the tariff side. So there's a lot of balls in the air around, just around coal. And that's just one of the balls, the many balls in the air for the leadership at Eskom that they're having to manage. But I think we've got some visibility both around the short term as well as around the medium term as to how they're going to be managing this, this coal issue. And it's now about implementation. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.